Hi, I'm Lisa Potchurch, your Youth Director here at Unity of Olympia, and I'm so happy that you joined us here today. We are continuing our series of Finding Your Zen. Today we're looking at our five senses with a title of What's in the Bag? And we're also looking at our daily chores, our daily stuff we have to do, and how we can do that more mindfully and with grace. So we are going to start our time with prayer. I have my little light that represents the Christ light that's in each and every one of us. And I have our little prayer guys who remind us how to pray. Pray with me, please. Thank you, Spirit, for bringing us together today. May we live, love, and grow from one another. May we be present and mindful to our own self-awareness. Let's move on to our Bible quote. Our Bible quote today comes from John. It says, I am the vine and you are the branches. If a man or a woman remains in me, and I in him or her, he or she will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So when I read this, I think of this being um, a, an example of how we are connected to God. If God is the vine and we are the branches, the more that we acknowledge God, the more that we take time for ourselves and honor ourselves in love and appreciation, the more fruit we can bear or the more things we can participate in of this world. Um, and what's useful for the vine is useful for the branches. So anything that the vine is experiencing is helpful for the branches. So we're going to talk more about that in a little bit. Let's move on to our tool for the week. So our tool for the week, we're going to talk about some mindful eating. So some of you may have got, or, and you may still have left, I should say, some of your M&Ms. I'm hoping you do. I'm hoping you didn't just open them up and just go, you know, ate them all up. But you might have, and I, I get that, because I sometimes, you know, eat things quickly without thinking. But when you want to practice mindfulness eating, you take and you really think about your five senses when you practice mindfulness eating. So we take a minute and we might, we might go ahead and we might look at the shape of what we're eating. We might look at the shape of what we're eating. So when you look here, you've got a little orange, little circle, and it's smooth. Now, sometimes it's not going to be so little or smooth. Sometimes what you're eating when you touch it has a different texture. I mean, if you think about french fries, macaroni and cheese, or a salad, there's different textures to each one of those. But acknowledging your senses and how you see that food is how we can do this mindfully. So the other thing we're going to look, we're going to listen for, now, does my food make a sound? You know, sometimes if a food's coming out from the um, frying pan or sizzling from the grill, it might still be sizzling, especially if it's a piece of meat. Um, but most food usually doesn't make a sound until you go to chew it. And we talked about the touch. We talked about the color shape. What about the smell? Does it smell like something? I know this whole package kind of smells like chocolate and it makes it taste good. A lot of times when your mom or your dad is cooking, you can probably smell it before it gets to your plate. And you're thinking, oh, that smells good. I can't wait to get some food. Um, I know Mr. Petridge cooks for me a lot too. And I, I just think he makes that kitchen smell so good sometimes. And then taste it. So I'm going to do this mindfully, which means I'm going to stick it in my mouth. I'm not going to just take this whole dump, you know, this M&Ms and just eat them real quick. I'm going to put this in my mouth and let it melt and talk about what those textures are. So it's still smooth. It's got that candy, candy outside. But once it starts to melt away, it gets a little bit bumpy and then smooth again. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't last long in your mouth because your mouth gets warm. And the next thing you know, yeah, you got a little bit of chocolate. Now, I want to make this last, so I'm savoring the moment. Now, if you still have one, maybe you could get some of your M&Ms and eat just one. Just one. Don't try to eat the whole package. Eat just one. Mmm, yeah. And then, of course, it just tastes like chocolate. 
So any of you who don't have chocolate out there, I apologize. But if you do, take a piece of chocolate and eat it mindfully. Reward yourself if you can eat it mindfully. You know, by saying good job. So I got this placemat from summertomato.com. And I'm going to be sending these in the mail to you this week so you can maybe do some mindful eating. What you would do for mindful eating, it says sit at the table. A lot of times when we eat, people sit. They might sit at a table, but they might be watching TV or they're not really sitting with their family. If you can, sit with your family. Don't watch TV. Sit at a table. Put the fork down in between each bite. Just Instead of just eating real quick, take and put the fork down. Chew your food. One of these says chew your food like 25 times more. Your body needs to process that food, and it processes it better when you chew it well. So I chew it, you want to chew it until it's almost like a liquid going down your throat because then it can, you, it, you, you save the stomach some work basically and it processes through your body easily. Savor those bites. Ignore health claims. Don't worry about how good something is as far as if it's a packaged food. Try to get whole grain foods, whole vegetables and fruits and eat well and whole foods. Maybe you can eat with your non-dominant hand. That means using a hand, like if you normally eat with your right hand, use your left hand to eat and see if that can slow you down a little bit so that you can eat more mindfully. And it says, don't eat straight from the packaging. Oh, I'm guilty of that. Mr. Patridge and I like pretzels and we'll sometimes sit and eat those. So I think what that's saying is take a portion. So just like we did with the M&Ms, I might just put two or three aside and then put the bag away and don't eat from there. And the last thing, oh, is just, I. you know what I like about the outside of the, it goes all the way around the placemat. It says num, 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 because you know, we enjoy food. Anyway, thank you. I appreciate you joining us for our mindfulness eating. We are gonna move to our what's in the bag. What's in the bag? <laughs> We got this little guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's so cute. He's from Moana. And his name is Pua. His name is Pua. And he... I'm going to listen one more time. He's just a cute little... He's a cute little piggy. Just saying hi. Just saying hi. Oh, let's see if we can make it go just a little more. Oh. There we go. So, what's in the bag? Let's read together what it tells us. Our senses give us lots of information about the world around us. We usually pay attention by looking, but you can play a game that helps you focus with your other senses. So normally when you try to find what something is, you look at it and you say, oh, that's a cup, that's a Kleenex box, those are M&Ms, and you can see. But sometimes, what if you can't see and your eyes are closed and you just get a bag? Oh, looky here, I have a bag. I have a bag and I put some things in here and I'm hoping that you can guess what I'm, I'm going to give you clues, and I'm hoping you can guess what it is that I have in my hand. So the first thing is something that when I shake it, it makes a little bit of noise. It's kind of round, and it's smooth. It has a couple bumps on it, and if I put it in your hand, it would almost feel like you were holding an egg, but it's not really an egg. Well, it's kind of an egg. It's a plastic egg. It's our little shaker egg that you got in your mindful, your first mindfulness box. All right, did you get that one? Give yourself a point if you got that one. Here's my next one. Ooh, it's kind of smooth, kind of bumpy. It's not really, it's got a rounded part, but it also has like a caved in part. This one's kind of hard. Ooh, it does have some rough edges too. Mmm. And the big clue is you find this at the beach. So what do you think you find at the beach? Yep, if you guessed a seashell, give yourself a point. You're right. Like that. Okay, you like this game? We got a few more things in here. Let's see what else we have. 
we have hmm, something round, totally round, like a circle. Oh, and it's kind of, kind of, it's smooth, but it's, it, and it's hard, but it, it's got some give to it, so it's like rubber. Huh, I wonder what it is. The clue would be, it bounces. <gasps> it's a ball. And if you see with your other senses, see, you would see that normally. You wouldn't have to feel that. You would know it. And we know it bounces. Oh. All right. Here we go. Let's see what else we got in this bag. Well, this one's soft and squishy. It's about the size of my hand. It might be something small that I would cuddle with. What do you think it is? This one feels like it's almost got wings inside of it. And it's from Pokemon. It's a little bean bag. Snorlax. He's so cute. He's so cute. Did you guess that one? You might not have guessed the Snorlax part, but you probably guessed it was some sort of stuffed animal, right? All right. Last one. Now, I kind of gave you a clue with the video what this one is. It's a toy, and it's hard plastic. Doesn't make any sounds, but it's got all kinds. It's kind of smooth, kind of bumpy, got all different kinds of shapes to it. It is a little toy. He's so cute. He's so cute. I hope you enjoyed this game. So what you do with this game is you would take and you would put these things in a bag. Go around, find a paper bag, put a few things in, and have someone in your family guess what's in your bag. Guess what's in your bag and use your other senses as we focus on our mindfulness. Great job. Great job, everybody. All right, we're going to move to our Bob Simon card. And our Bob Simon card this week is... The word is ripe, ripe. You're the light of the world and it's time you figured it out. It's time. And on the back of the card, he talks about, he talks about his word, ripe. When is a fruit, please read with me if you'd like. When is a fruit ready to be eaten? When it is ripe. That is the only time. Too early or too late, both result in a sour experience. Now, Mr. David, and some of you might have been having this experience as well. The blackberries right now are very, um, there, there's so many of them, and they look ripe, and you go to eat them, and some of them aren't necessarily ripe yet, which is a very sour face when you go to, when you go to eat them. And some of them are really good because they are ripe. So consider for a moment that you're a ripe piece of fruit and that your life is now. The dash between your birth date and your expiration date is the period of your ripeness. You were put on this earth and in this body to shine the light that you are, to live fully now, not tomorrow, not next month, not next year, not after you get your certification, your degree, your promotion, or your retirement. Now. There is no more time to waste. This ripeness is what Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. called the fierce urgency of now. So step up, step out, be bold, be brave, shine your light now. Read the commitment with me. My life is now. My time is now. The world awaits my light. So right now they want you to feel that gratitude for life. Feel that presence that you're here. Feel the purpose that you have here on this earth. That you are here for a reason. Right now, no matter what. We're going to move on to our Made Out of Stars quote today. Our Made Out of Stars, this is a great journal. I did get a few of them, so if anybody wants these journals, let me know. They are in the mail and on their way as we speak, so if you want to have one on your own to do your writing, you can. Otherwise, I've started to send the quotes along with the writing assignments, um, or the writing that goes with it, the journaling in the uh, weekly e the weekly mail, not email, but the weekly mail. All right, so read this with me, please. The best part of one's life is the working part, the creative part. Believe me, I love to succeed. However, the real spiritual and emotional excitement is in the doing. So, in the doing. So I want you to think first about, let's go back to... Um, the vine and the branches and I want you to think about that 
quote, that Bible quote, and how that applies to this same quote from I Made Out of Stars. Sometimes we have choices. So each day we have choices. We can make those choices from fear or in resistance or from faith, trust, and love. How do we apply this to what we do each day? When I'm doing something I want to do, it usually isn't a problem unless the job gets harder than I thought. Sometimes I have to remind myself why I want to do something because this voice can be in the background saying, this is too hard, I want to do something else, this is too much work. And when that voice comes up or when I have to do something I don't want to do, I have a choice to do the task with an attitude or grumble or make the task fun somehow. So David uh, reminded me of a quote from a movie. Let's see if we can get that quote going. Let's see if you know this voice. Let's see if you know this voice. Shall we begin? It is a game, isn't it, Mary Poppins? Well, it depends on your point of view. You see, in every job that must be done, there is an element of fun. You find the fun and snap! The job's a game. There we go. So do you know what movie that's from? If you guess Mary Poppins, you were right. Yes. So she says in every job that must be done, there is an element of fun. And find the fun and the job is a snap. In every element, in every job that must be done, there is an element of fun. So how do you make something more fun? When you know you've got to, you know, have more fun with what you're doing. When you've got to do a chore that maybe you're not so happy about. Hmm. So maybe you're someone who doesn't like to brush your teeth that much. Maybe you're someone who doesn't like to take a shower or clean their room. Or maybe you enjoy those things, but maybe it's something else you don't like to do. Whatever it is, if you take the time to make it fun, then you can make the job easier on yourself and probably on those around you. So maybe finding a favorite poem to recite or a song, or maybe rehashing um, some of the a video game that you play or a movie that you watch. Part of it in your mind as you're doing is you're brushing your teeth. So many times they've said, sing happy birthday while you brush your teeth. I get tired of happy birthday. I have to sing f more so songs that I like instead of just happy birthday. So I'll sing like Karen Drucker, Karen Drucker's Grateful for This Day or Janine Cummings songs. I love to sing songs when I'm doing a job that maybe I is boring, that I don't really like as much. So... The other thing you can do, um, I was trying to think if I, if I covered, I think I've covered it all. But it, what happens is, is you put on, let's say you're doing housework, you put on your favorite music, housework doesn't feel so bad and it goes by quickly. And, and one of the things is because of my attitude toward it. If I sit there the whole time and grumble and I, and I um, waste time basically just being mad at the fact that I have to do something, I don't in, take the joy, I take the joy out of it. And we have to put the joy back in. So put your pencil to paper and think of something you dread doing on a daily basis. I want you to write about how you could take more pride in the simple act of doing. More pride. Could you recite a favorite verse or poem while brushing your teeth? Could you pick up your room by giving yourself points for each item that you pick up? And reward yourself with something when you're done. Find the element of fun. Ah, oh, I hope you can do that this week. That's your homework this week. Find the element of fun in the jobs that maybe aren't so fun. So we're going to close today by thinking about our basic unity principles. God is all good and active in everything, everywhere. I am naturally good because God's divinity is in me and in everyone. I create my experiences by what I choose to think and what I feel and believe. Through affirmative prayer and meditation, I connect with God and bring out the good in my life. I do and give my best by living the truth I know. I make a difference. I want you to take a moment and think about which one of those principles do you feel connects the most with what we're doing here and what we did today in our lesson. Maybe talk to a friend about it or a loved one. And then maybe look at which, which one's your favorite unity principle. Which one do you want to look at this week and remember this week as you're going through and starting something maybe new or 
as you're as you're working toward just what we talked about finding the element of fun all right also i want to put a little challenge out there if you can take a picture of yourself when you get your mindfulness boxes or take a picture of yourself when you're using a mindfulness tool i would love to use your pictures so you can see more than just my face i I miss every one of your faces, so I would love to see those. If you have made it to this far in the video and you hear this, please send me a few pictures and let me know how you're doing. You can send me an email too. I really enjoy it. I did get some really um, nice thank you notes from Stella and Jude this week, and that just made my week. Thank you, Stella and Jude. And I definitely got a few emails from some parents that are appreciating our mindfulness tools that we're talking about each week. So let's say our prayer for protection. We're going to say we, so the light of God surrounds us. We are the light of God. So we're going to talk about it or use it in the, that context. The light of God surrounds us. We are the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. We are the love of God. The power of God protects us. We are the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. We are the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Have a great week.